gentlemen, boys and girls, and all our lovely viewers, you are officially, we are welcome to the official launching of the third edition of the Energy Commission's Senior High School Renewable Energy Challenge. So this morning, before we start the main program, we're going to have a little chit chat with two very distinguished gentlemen in the energy and education sectors in the country. But before we get to that, I would just want to give you a brief background of what the Energy Commission Senior High School Renewable Energy Challenge is all about, the objectives, and then what we seek to achieve by this challenge. My name is Kwesi Ohenye Kufu. I'm an officer for renewable energy at the Energy Commission. So the Energy Commission, as part of its mandate under the Renewable Energy Act, is responsible for promoting the development and utilization of renewable energy resources, as well as advising relevant stakeholders on educational curriculum when it comes to renewable energy and energy efficient um, things. So in line with this, the Energy Commission, in collaboration with the Ghana Education Service, instituted the Energy Commission Senior High School's Renewable Energy Challenge with the aim of fostering an interest in renewable energy in students of second cycle institutions. Now, you'd, you'd probably ask yourself, is this going to be the new Brilla, or is this challenge here to replace it? Not at all. We are not in competition with anybody. We are just here to promote renewable energy and energy efficiency amongst students in second cycle institutions. The challenge seeks to provide education and awareness on renewable energy, clean energy, and energy efficiency among the various second cycle institutions in the country. We've had two editions of the challenge so far, and today we are launching the third edition of the challenge. And the theme for this year's edition is clean cooking and food processing using renewable energy technologies. The challenge is open to all schools in all the regions in the country. Um, the students are expected to develop projects in the area of either clean cooking or food processing, and these should be related to the use of renewable energy technologies. So as I mentioned earlier, the challenge is open to all, so I'm hoping that my alma mater, Presec Legon, will win this year's edition. Okay, so now I'll go straight to my first interview, and I am honored to be joined by a very distinguished gentleman and one of the foremost experts in the energy sector in Ghana and in Africa on a whole. I'm joined by the Director for Renewables and Energy Efficiency, Mr. Kofi Edu Ejako. Mr. Ejako, welcome to this corner. We've dubbed it Kwesi's Corner. Thank you. So, Mr. Ejako, uh, we just have a few questions that we want to ask you, just to give our viewers an idea of the challenge, what has been done so far, and what the plans for the future are concerning this renewable energy challenge. So the first question is, what prompted the Energy Commission to come up with this Senior High School's Renewable Energy Challenge? Thank you very much, Chrissy. Um You see, as a responsible institution, um, and more so a regulator, you need to look around you, um, observe what are the challenges confronting the society, and then you try your best to um, solve those that you can. Over the period, we are all aware of the concerns that have been expressed by people regarding the widening gap between academia and the industry. This competition has been put in place as our contribution to bridge the gap because we encourage students to move away from the theory and do things that will actually benefit the society. And that is what the industry exists to do. Secondly, we want to catch them young before they grow. It is, it is important that um, you train the child what you want him to grow to become. And when he grows, certainly he will not depart from it. There, there, there is so much myth 
surrounding certain things in our society. And this competition is put in place to actually demystify, um, especially science-based subjects. So we encourage the students to do research, improve on their research skills, improve on their presentation skills, and to prepare them for the job market in the future. So these are some of the important considerations that actually uh, uh, push us to put in place this competition. Thank you very much, sir. I like the fact that you said we are looking to move away from the, just the theory-based education and then also apply what the students are learning because, you know, sometimes we all just do chew and pour and we come out and exactly. we've not learned much. So my second question is, for how long has the Senior High School Renewable Learning Challenge been in existence and what is the criteria for selection? Um, we have done it for two years. Um, we started in 2019, and then because of COVID, we skipped 2020. So we did the second one in 2021. Uh, in terms of criteria, um, it is open to all um, SHS. So those schools that show interest will have to first um, submit their registration to the coordinator for science, technology, mathematics, innovation, and whatever. It's, it's, it's a mouthful that, that we have these regional coordinators in all the system regions. So you submit your uh, registration of interest to them. And 10 best schools are chosen from each region. In a situation where we have more than 10 schools, then we do a preliminary competition to screen and then settle on the best 10. With the help of um, GES, we are able to do that. So then at the end of the day, we have 10 best schools representing each region. Thank you very much. So for <clears throat> The two editions that have been held, what would you say about the participation and how has it been like? The participation has been very encouraging. The first one, 2019, you can call that pilot. We started from Greater Accra region. And uh, I think, you know, we had about 29 schools participating. Then 2021, when we went full scale nationwide, Actually, let me be quick and say that we managed to cover four, um, 14 out of the 16 regions. And the number of schools that participated shot to 90. And I want to believe that this year we are going to go more than that. Um, the interest has been very, very, interest shown by uh, schools have been very, very um, encouraging. Okay. Well, I hope that this year we can have participants from all 16 regions and we would have more schools participating. So you mentioned that the COVID-19 had an impact. Um, not to waste too much time on that, but could you give us a, 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 a fair idea of how it impacted the organization of the planned second edition? Yes. Um, all that the COVID-19 um, forced on us was to prevent any form of assembly uh, coming together to do anything. And this competition involves bringing school um, children together to present, and they, they come with bus loads of the student, their, their colleagues who come to cheer them on. And the COVID did not allow us to do all these things. So for 2020, we shelved it. It was very unfortunate because we had just started and we needed 2020 to shift to a higher gear, but that was not to. Uh, 
submission of invite to coordinators who have to prepare these students, and then these coordinators ending up doing the research work or the project for the students. Yeah. Okay, so the next question, in your opinion, what do you think can be done to, let's say, spice up the renewable energy challenge, make it more interesting and appealing for um, students in the second cycle institutions? I think that we need to bust that myth that this whole thing is about uh, science students. That myth about science needs to be broken. That is the first thing. To make it very easy for all and sundry, those who have the power, the world power, to get themselves involved. Then we also need to do very serious publicity. Very serious publicity. Uh, I, I will not say that we have not done much publicity. You know, the beginning of everything, um, you know, the beginning of everything um, is, is not easy. We have started well, but there is the need for us to do very serious publicity. And then, um, if, because, you know, I'm talking about sponsorship, but the sponsorship will come from the publicity. If people get to know what we are doing uh, to help the society, that is where the interest is going to be generated for them to also invest in it. So if we put these three things together, I am very sure that this challenge will go places. Okay, so this is a very... Electricity from sprouting um, plants. The girls were very eloquent. They could coordinate their thoughts. They could sway the audience. They carry the audience. So in terms of the project, they were on point. And in terms of communicating, that is presentation, they were superb. So I mean, um, I'm, I'm waiting to see something extraordinary this year. Other than that, GPANA will continue to be my favorite uh, project. OK. So finally, what projections can be made with regards to the school's challenge from the Energy Commission's viewpoint? This is very interesting and important question to me. You see, the, the highest form of education is the ability to combine the brain and the hands. The, the memorization which has characterized our education is the lowest form of education. And Energy Commission is investing to produce a generation that will be very good at the highest form of education, the combination of the brain and the, hand, and the hands. If you look around for similar competitions, it is just the memorization, you understand. But this is unique. You, we want to see you using your hand and your brain, a very good connection between the hand and the brain. And my projection is that this particular challenge will become an international one for this West African sub-region where in the next foreseeable future, Ghana will become a hub of this challenge. And all countries, both Francophone and Anglo. So, Osino, you've had one of your own. He's throwing a challenge to you. And I apologize that I was trying to steal one of your very, very <laughs> uh, well-known old boys. So, Mr. Jacko, now we want to move to a different sector and have a little chat about renewable energy as the sector renewable energy in Ghana, how it is going, and basically what information we can put out to the general public. Because I believe some, not everybody understands what renewable energy is and what the Energy Commission does when it comes to promoting the development of renewable energy. Thank you, Kazi. Um, before I answer your question, 
I want to mention that one very important reason for putting in place this challenge is to develop a future generation that will be ready for the global transition from fossil-based energy to the renewable energy. The whole world is changing. And you either join the train or you are left behind. Ghana will not want to be left behind, and that is one of the reasons why we are preparing the future generation to be well equipped to live in a world where renewable energy and energy efficiency will define humanity and development. Having said that, the Energy Commission has been put in place as the regulator of the renewable energy space. What we do is to prescribe rules and regulations to govern the market, to establish a level playing field for, for investors to be able to operate and have their peace of mind in, in, in a game where there is no referee. I mean, everybody plays the game according to his own style, and that game does not actually end. So we want to have a very sound and level playing field that will attract investors to come and invest in the renewable energy space. That is what the Energy Commission is put out there to do. And when we, come, we talk of renewable energy, we are talking about energy sources that are not depletable. So we're talking about solar, we're talking about wind, we're talking about hydro, we're talking about tidal waves, we're talking about a whole lot of sources that nature you know, replenishes after they have been used. So um, the, the, the space is ready, the market is good, um, investors are welcome. We in, in Ghana can boast of about 86% of um, access rate to electricity, modern forms of electricity. So we still have 14% of the total population who do not have access. And to be able to, to achieve our universal access goal, we need to see that also as about 20, 40 megawatts in the Winnebar areas. So uh, we, we aren't doing bad. We aren't doing bad, we, except that we are taking um, cautious steps so that we don't experience stranded assets uh, in the conventional energy. So we are trying to balance the skills. But I think that what we have done so far is commendable. Okay, so my viewers, for those of you who didn't know, Ghana is doing a lot in the renewable energy space and there are plans to do much more. Mr. Jacko, this is the end of our interview. Thank you very much. I've learned a lot and it has been my personal honor to be able to interview you as my director. Thank you very much, Mr. Jacko. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm glad that um, I encountered you this morning to share a few thoughts with our listeners. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you too, Mr. Jacko. Guest is Mr. Frederick Kenneth Appiah, who is a senior manager for renewable energy at the Energy Commission. He will be joining us and we'll have a very brief conversation about renewable energy its development, its utilization, its management, 
in the country. So, Mr. Pierre, you're welcome. Thank you very much. You're looking very sharp. I like your bow tie. Where can I get one? Contact the PA for the Energy Commission. Okay. So please, for those watching, if you want a bow tie, the bow tie that Mr. Pierre is working, please come to the Energy Commission and we will see what we can do for you. So Mr. Pierre, this morning we just want to continue our conversation concerning renewable energy, its development, its utilization, and its management in the country. As a senior manager at the Energy Commission, um, I want you to tell us a bit more about what, you know, in your personal capacity, what you believe Ghana can do and what is going to be done, what is being done in the space of renewable energy in the country. All right, thank you, Kwesi uh, Ahenen Akufu. All right, so for, in terms of renewable energy development in Ghana, I think Ghana has come a long way. Um, in the, before 2011, we didn't have any regulatory framework. Uh, we had policy, uh, I mean, certain policy directions and so on. But in terms of regulatory framework, we didn't have specifically for renewable energy. We were riding on the back of the Energy Commission's Act uh, 541. So um, when people want to develop renewable energy, um, they didn't have any straightforward processes and other things to follow. And certain regulatory uh, instrument that can propel the uptake of renewable energy was also not there. So 2011, uh, we got the support from the World Bank, the ministry together with the Energy Commission and partners developed or established the Renewable Energy Act at 832, 2011. It was enacted into law. And that set up the framework for uh, regulations to be done for the renewable energy sector. Uh, in it, we realized that um, we also didn't have certain incentives that can propel the integration of renewable energy. So in it was the renewable energy, uh, sorry, the feed-in tariff, which was a preferential tariff to attract renewable energy into that, that sector. Um, we also had a renewable energy purchase obligation, which sought to oblige certain entities to uh, procure renewable energy, um, yeah, procure renewable energy. Uh, we also had other, other instruments inside. So that set the framework for uh, investors to come into it. The law also gave rise to a licensing framework to be developed. So investors could have a clear defined processes and what to do and not, what not to do. So we had a renewable energy licensing manual developed. Um, all that also brought about certain interests in the development of renewable energy. So we had so many investors trooping into uh, the renewable energy space, especially we had a very, very juicy feeding tariff. So from that time, I uh, realized that the interest had been high, even and tidal wave uh, technologies and any other, including even mini grid, any other renewable energy technology that we can think of. Thank you very much for that, and that you gave us a lot of information. And I just wanted to, I heard you mention private companies also establishing, you know, solar plants in the country. Um, does that mean that as a private individual, I can be involved in the development of renewable energy in the country, or it is an activity that is meant only for the government or state-owned agencies? Oh, well, I think uh, the, uh, this, this government's policy to attract investment into uh, all the sectors, uh, including uh, energy and renewable energy in this case. Uh, so uh, it's not just skewed towards state agencies. No, um, we have private investment coming. Um, but you know, in 2015, we had certain um, issues in terms of power supply in the country, and therefore there were certain um, directions that we moved. Uh, hitherto, we're doing direct negotiations for power procurement. Uh, but in 2020, there was a policy directive uh, that we, we, we shift from direct procurement of power 
to competitive procurement scheme. Uh, with that, uh, we, could, we could achieve certain uh, cost-effective uh, price and so on, uh, and reduce the burden on the government or the distribution utility. So we've moved from direct negotiation for power procurement to competitive procurement scheme. We've gone ahead to amend the Renewable Energy Act. So we have Renewable Energy Act uh, as amended um, 10, Act 1045, uh, which introduces a uh, competitive procurement scheme, net metering, uh, a revised version of Renewable Energy Purchase up on the line. When we talk about everybody will mention cost. But now it is not so. It's not really so. Uh, cost is there, but it is not um, a key issue, uh, especially for solar PV. The others, the cost is still there, even though it's coming down. But in terms of um, solar PV in specific, the cost of the model came down drastically uh, since 20, uh, let's say, uh, 20, oh, oh, 2010, it started coming down, and now it's very, very low. Uh, for example, when we started the National Rooftop Solar Program, one, um, just 500 watt solar panel was going for uh, 950 Ghana cities. But now the same 250 watt model, you can get it uh, around 500 or even less. All right, so the price had come, come down. Uh, one kilowatt solar system was costing around 15,000 Ghana cities to 17,000 cost, all the cost in general for renewable energy. Um, notably, I may name some few. Um, notably, we have the uh, Sunref. Um, Sunref is a, a green financial facility or financing facility, a green credit line. What it means is that um, you are not paying for the the commercial rate of of, of 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 the system that you are going for, and it's it's and it's targeted towards uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency for residential uh, customers, for commercial, micro, small, medium scale enterprises. All right, and it's currently running. Um, is being uh, hosted by the Energy Commission. So we have a secretariat that uh, manages that portfolio. Uh, and um, in terms of uh, disbursement and other things, we are um, doing it with Cal Bank and the Ghana uh, GCB and then commercial customers. Uh, there's one that is also going for uh, public facilities. So we, we call it government goes solar. There is a drive by government to ensure that public facilities, so it could be a ministry, it could be um, an inst institution like Energy Commission or a university or a secondary school or a clinic and so on, hospital, to procure a renewable energy system um, to augment its electricity demands or needs. Uh, so that one is preparatory uh, activities are almost complete. Feasibility is completed, and um, we, we are we are about starting generating source, which would be a solar combined with genset or combined with uh, wind, and then a battery facility, and then it goes through the same poles and lines that we see around in our neighbourhood, and then goes to the community. So that is being done almost like 50. Um, communities will have that form of um, uh, technology to provide electricity for them. And then another component is going to some, there are some towns and communities, they are also dispersed. They are not together, so you cannot string cables or the grid network to cover community by community or household by household. They are isolated or scattered. So those will be served with about 30,000 uh, solar home systems. And the project as a SREP program is, is, is funding that one. There's another component for the urban. What I've talked about are rural for the urban, like you and I who may have access to electricity. 
uh, that is called net metering solar PV program. Uh, and that one, the idea is that it will support individuals and also commercial entities to get a solar system. And more importantly, there is a bill, net billing or net metering. There's a meter that, that's, that could be able to uh, address your intake and outtake. For, so for example, if you have a solar and it is overproducing because maybe the demand in your house is low, let's say you are not in the house, only your fridge is on, and you have more than necessary, then that meter uh, has a capability to other funding facilities that we are working on, we've applied to the Green Climate Fund, uh, GCL. Uh, it's also um, a mixture of a green credit line and also uh, a grant facility. Uh, that one, we are liaising with Ecobank. Ecobank is a lead bank that is working on, on that aspect. Um, and that is also targeting about $30 billion uh, facility that also will come and add up to whatever portfolio that we have in, in the system. The other developing partners who are also bringing um, some facilities one way or the other. Uh, ECRI, for example, that's ECOWAS uh, Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, and located or based at PRIA, um, uh, that is KIVED. It's also launching uh, ROJEP, that is a regional electrification uh, grid uh, solar program for all West African countries, and Ghana is also part. So these are some of the facilities that we have that everybody, including the rural and the urban uh, customers, can take advantage of. Thank you very much, Mr. Pierre. So I want to put you on the spot a bit and ask you a very direct question. So from all that you said, are you trying to say that now people should not be scared of the supposed you know, um, high initial cost of these renewable energy technologies? Should they feel that as an average Ghanaian citizen, they can also procure some of these systems using some of these facilities that you mentioned? Yeah, I, I think uh, I can boldly say that yes. Um, and especially with these funding facilities available, it is going to make it more affordable for you. So and we don't have the reason again to say uh, renewables are expensive and therefore are no going for and, and so on. So I can, I can boldly say, 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 say that. Um, somebody once said that if you think renewables is expensive, uh, try doing so. Uh, there you will get to know that uh, there's something more expensive than uh, renewable energy. Okay, so viewers, you heard Mr. Pia, you can go to GCB, you can go to Cal Bank, and you can tell them that Mr. Frederick Kenneth, a peer of the Energy Commission, says they can come to them for funding support for their renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Now, Mr. Pia, moving on to the participation of private companies. So far, how many companies do we have in the country who have been licensed to you know, provide some of these solutions, install solar systems for homes and for offices? Yeah, uh, per our records, uh, I can say uh, what we have, if my memory serves me right, then we have almost like 120. Um, license to get into 200, license to install, uh, as well as, I'm just combining it, as well as import renewable energy systems. In Ghana, uh, per our licensing framework, if you want to import any renewable energy systems, you need a license. So those are captured. And then if you want to install any renewable energy system, renewable energy for your customers, just um, visit the Commission's website, www.energycom.gov.gh, or just walk into the uh, office of the Energy Commission. They are able personnel and officers who are ready to assist you, take you through the processes, and then uh, when you have submitted the needed documentation, we process and you get your license, and you are in for business. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Pia. Uh, we'll bring our interview session to an end. Um, we have been very, very 
blessed and honored to have you to give us all this information on renewable energy and its development in the country. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and viewers, we've come to an end and we, are thank, we thank you for joining us via our Facebook stream. The program is going to continue. The official launch is about to now begin, so please stay tuned. Don't log off. I've been your host, Kwesi Ohenye Kufu, a senior officer at the, Renewable, at the Energy Commission for Renewable Energy. Thank you.
our first lady just arrived and in no time she'll be joining us so that we can get the program starting our second lady sorry our second lady has arrived so when she arrives we'll be upstanding and then we'll all sing yenara assassini along with our technicians thank you Shall we please take our seats? Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, we are all welcome to the third edition, the launch of the third edition of the Renewable Energy Challenge. We are here today because Renewable Energy Challenge, Renewable Energy, Clean Energy, and Energy Efficiency are important to us. Certainly, we all use energy and are concerned with energy issues. Our 75% of us can remember a time growing up when we left out, were let out of activities. These activities actually created void in our hearts. However, when we were given the opportunity to partake in the activities again, it ended up giving us positive vibes and we shared our experiences together with it. Our younger generation have a lot of space for excitement in them. And as if we do not give them the opportunity to express this excitement, definitely they would channel all these energies into doing something else. It is for this space, the Energy Commission, in collaboration with the Ghana Education Service, came up with the Renewable Energy Challenge, where we engage the young ones, so that with all the excitement that they have, they are going to put all through into research to bring out renewable energy technologies into our country. With this, we are highly, highly grateful, and we welcome all of you today to this particular special edition. Shall we please use this opportunity to equally acknowledge the organizers of this special program the Energy Commission. Shall we please give them a round of applause for this? And of course, we can also not leave um, Ghana Education Service out for their contribution. Shall we please give them a round of applause as well? We don't want to waste much time. Shall we please welcome Mr. John Bambiu to give us the opening prayer and then we'll continue the program. Thank you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the blessings of this day. 
Lord, I thank you for everyone gathered here today to join the Annual Commission for the launch of the third edition of the Senior High School Nobu Challenge. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will be the Alpha and the Omega over this program. We say that come in your power. We pray that, Lord, let the effulgence of your presence shepherd this program to a successful end. We thank you for everything, knowing that you are here with us. This I ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Bambu. Shall we please invite Engineer Oscar Amunu Neza, the Executive Secretary of Energy Commission, to give us the opening address? Shall we please welcome him to our people? Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mrs. Samiria Baumia, Second Lady of Ghana. The Honorable Deputy Minister, my boss, Minister of Energy, Honorable Andrew, Andrew Ajapa Mesa. Member of the Board of the Energy Commission, Dr. Isaac Frimpong Mensambozo. Deputy Director General, Ghana Education Service, Dr. Kwabina Bempa Tando. Heads, teachers, and students of public second cycle institution. Due to the launch of the third edition of the Energy Commission Senior High School's Renewable Energy Challenge. I will want to believe that all those who have been with us from the beginning of this journey since 2019 have enjoyed the challenge and found it innovative and educational. Indeed, as the Commission prepares to mark its 25th anniversary later this year, we are encouraged by the continued support of our partners and the enthusiasm of our stakeholders and the general public towards our flagship programs, of which the Senior High School Renewable Energy Challenge is key. The challenge was born out of the Commission's mandate under the Renewable Energy Act 2011 Act 832, which includes promotion and the development and utilization of renewable energy resources. The Commission is also to recommend and advise relevant stakeholders on the educational curriculum on efficient use of renewable energy sources and evolve programs for its mainstreaming in the educational curriculum in Ghana. We are delighted to be promoting research and development in our public second cycle schools by encouraging the transformation of ideas and concepts into actual products and product development. The Energy Commission and projects that will aid in solving everyday challenges in the country. Two editions of the challenge have been organized since its inception, with the recent final competition being held on 14th October 2021 at the Accra International Conference Center. The challenge was open to all second cycle institutions in the country, and at the end of the competition, Jama Pensign Senior High Technical School, which was not a well-known school, emerged as winners with Infantiman Girls Senior High School and Navrongo Senior High School taking the second and third positions respectively. The all-girls winning team from German Pensine were general art students, and I will want to take, we will take a special note of that all girls winning team from the German should be related to the use of renewable energy technologies. Participating schools are encouraged to come up with new product innovations, accessories to products in areas. The projects to be submitted should aid individuals or businesses in the residential commercial or industrial sectors of the clean cooking value chain. In the area of clean cooking, the focus is on either improved stoves or fuels, whilst for food processing, schools should focus on how renewable energy could be utilized in food processing and preservation. I will entreat everyone to encourage and support the schools, the teachers,
meetings uh, and wish he could have been here himself. Uh, I am, however, honored uh, to stand in his stead uh, to deliver uh, some remarks uh, this morning. Uh, it is really exciting to see students uh, from various senior high schools uh, gathered here, and we are excited about their development um, in Ghana. Uh, we know and believe that you, the youth are the future of this country, and I am especially glad uh, that we are engaging them in this sustainable pathway. At the Ghana Education Service, uh, our mandate is to ensure that all Ghanaian children and children living in Ghana of school-going age, irrespective of their tribe, their gender, their ability levels, irrespective of their religious affiliations or political affiliations, are provided with quality formal education and training. It is, this mandate is carried out by the Director General, supported by his two deputies and the management of the Ghana Education Service. At the Ghana Education Service, we oversee um, the implementation of basic education. Uh, improving learning outcomes have become our mantra. Um, we develop talent and we develop critical thinkers. Your Excellency, the GES is leading the way in mathematics. Over the past a few years, we have focused on building STEM centers across the country, uh, with the first one to be opened at the Accra Senior High School, uh, which will cater to 120 students at any given time from primary through senior high school uh, students. We have also spent a lot of time on what we call B-STEM or basic STEM, where we have already completed a pilot in about 100 schools across the country, introducing them to STEM education. Uh, we intend to expand this to every single basic school, KG, junior, and senior high school across the country by providing them with STEM equipment um, and the necessary resources uh, to study in STEM education. It is for this reason, Your Excellency and others, um, that um, the Ghana Education Service uh, has taken on seriously this notable in initiative by the end in the Energy Commission Senior High School Renewable Energy Challenge. The challenge, Your Excellency, has been set up to give opportunities to senior high school students uh, to develop their ideas um, in ways that solve real life problems, especially in ensuring that there is renewable energy and energy efficiency. This is to promote research and innovation in renewable energy and energy efficiency by students in order to address developmental challenges and to improve everyday lives right in the early stages of their education. Your Excellency, as you are aware, the first edition uh, was piloted in 2019 with 29 schools in Greater Accra. In 2020, unfortunately due to COVID, we were unable to have the second edition. However, the third edition covered some 90 schools from 14 of the 16 regions across the country, with Greater Accra and Ashanti region presenting about half of those schools, and for that matter, having some pre preliminary uh, competitions during that period. Our encouragement to the other two regions that could not participate uh, is to see the commitment of Greater Accra and Ashanti region and ensure that this year they participate. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this year's competition, clean cooking, and food processing using renewable energy technologies touches on an important sector for many, uh, especially in rural areas, as well, as well as even in our senior high schools. It is also befitting that we choose clean cooking, Your Excellency, because we know you're a clean cooking ambassador. And we are humbled that you will come and launch this year's um, competition for us. All of you will agree with me that cooking is a fundamental part of life. It is an activity that not only nourishes the body when we eat whatever we cook, but it brings families together. 
Uh, it also is a way to showcase culture uh, from all walks of life um, in our world that we live in. However, we do know that the type of fuels and cooking stoves that we use in cooking, especially in the rural areas, have a lot of health implications. Women and children especially are disproportionately affected by household air pollutions, um, which cause um, household air pollutions caused as a result of the fuels that are used in cooking in especially our rural areas. It is therefore very important for us as a country to look at ways of improving our cooking stoves that we use uh, and to ensure that they reduce the negative health implications. This can be done, of course, through research and development. And we believe at the Ghana Education Service that it should start in the classroom. And it should start right at the senior high school level. We hope that our teachers gathered here and in our schools, as well as uh, will guide our students and support our students as they conceptualize and develop their ideas into projects that solve some of these challenges. On this note, Your Excellency, I wish all of us has just commenced the second phase of the process towards the preparation of a national energy transition plan. Ladies and gentlemen, as we speak, the National Energy Transition Committee is conducting stakeholder engagement with targeted groups here in Accra. Indeed, during the consultative fora conducted nationwide on the transition plan, one view that emerged strongly was the need for Ghanaian youth to be involved directly in the national effort towards energy efficiency and ultimately attaining a net zero status. Your Excellency, in view of this, the relevance of this competition cannot be overemphasized. I am informed that this year's edition is aimed at developing the research skills of our SHS students and promoting renewable energy innovation in clean cooking and food processing in Ghana. Distinguished guests, this initiative is consistent with the Ministry's ultimate goal of developing and promoting cleaner cooking methods and technology. Having highlighted how important initiatives like the Senior High School Renewable Energy Challenge are to Ghana's development, we must also identify and enhance government interventions which have driven these initiatives towards attaining their desired objectives. Distinguished guests, the government's free SHS policy has not only increased the enrollment of Ghanaian youth into senior high schools, but it has also ensured that initiatives like the one we are gathered here to launch have a wider reach. I will therefore seize this opportunity to entreat that we rise above partisan loyalties and give the free SHS policy all the support it needs. Your Excellency, as I shift focus back to the SHS Renewable Energy Challenge, on behalf of my minister, I wish to pledge that the ministry's unflinching support for this initiative, as has been indicated over the years, will continue. The policy goal of the ministry is to achieve the distribution of 3 million units of clean and efficient biomass cook stoves and 50% of LPG use by 2030. The ministry therefore views that the SHS Renewable Energy Challenge will enhance its effort at achieving this goal. In that regard, the Ministry of Energy intends to fund the further development and promotion of the most outstanding innovative clean cooking solution from this year's schools challenge for further development and promotion. I would encourage all prospective participants to put all the, their all into their respective projects. Think deep and come out with the best of innovations that can transform the cooking sector of the country. I will entreat school heads to accord the participating students the needed support to facilitate their participation in the challenge. I will also urge the organizers to put in place the needed mechanisms to guarantee the intellectual property rights of students. Your Excellency, I would at this juncture express my sincere gratitude to the Energy Commission for living up to its statutory responsibility 
of leading the promotion of renewable energy in Ghana. The award of one of Africa's public sector leaders given to the Executive Secretary, Engineer Oscar Mono Neza, <laughs> at the third Africa Public Sector Conference in Awards 2022 is indeed a testament of your contribution to the development of our nation. As we launch the third edition, the Commission's consistency in the organization of the SHS Renewable Energy Challenge so far must be applauded. Appreciation is also extended to partners of previous editions. It is my hope that this competition grows to gain popularity on a level similar to the National Science and Math Quiz. To this end, I would urge all agency sector agencies, Ghana National Gas Company Limited, Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, the National Petroleum Authority, Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation, Temporary Refinery, VRA, Gridco, ECG, Netco, Bui, and Valco to all rally behind the Energy Commission and commit resources to support this initiative. I will also urge private sector players to explore possible partnerships with the Commission towards supporting the challenge. I wish you all the very best in this year's edition of the challenge of the Senior High School Renewable Energy Challenge. Thank you all for your kind attention, and may God bless us all. Thank you very much, Honorable. At this young child, we want to go onto our screens so that we can enjoy a video documentary. But Ben, before we do that, we want to still acknowledge one of our sponsors. That's Clean Cooking Alliance. Shall we please give it up for them? They have been with us all throughout, and we are very, very grateful for the support that they are giving us. God richly bless them. Thank you very much. Shall we enjoy our documentary? Research and innovation in renewable energy, clean energy and energy efficiency, and to address developmental challenges at both the local and national level. The Energy Commission in collaboration with the Ghana Education Service seeks to provide education and awareness on renewable energy, clean energy and energy efficiency among the various senior high schools and technical institutions in the country. The challenge will highlight various competitions by SHS students and provide a platform for the exhibition of their innovative projects. The aim is to promote creative thinking and to provide mentorship to the young students. Schools that have their projects selected will be offered a platform to showcase their projects at the annual Ghana Renewable Energy where the most outstanding projects will be awarded prizes. Two editions of the Xtrek have been organized since its inception with the recent final being held on 14th October, 2021 at the Accra International Conference Center. The challenge was open to all senior high schools and technical institutions of the country. It comprised 14 regional competitions, two zonal competitions and the grand finale. At the end of the competition, Gama Penzen Senior High Technical School emerged as winners with Mr. Man Girls Senior High School and Navrongo Senior High School emerging second and third respectively. The objectives of the challenge are two. One, 
develop the research skills of senior high school students and promote technological innovation in renewable energy and energy efficiency. 2. Instill in students a passion for solving renewable energy, clean energy, energy efficiency and climate change challenges through innovative research. 3. Develop presentation skills of senior high school students, and 4. Promote self-confidence and encourage hard work through public recognition and rewards. The theme for this year's challenge is clean cooking and food processing using renewable energy technologies. Participating schools are expected to develop projects in the area of either clean cooking or food processing and it should be related to the use of renewable energy technologies. Schools are encouraged to come up with new product innovations, accessories to products or digital innovations to improve the performances and store efficiencies of existing projects in the above-mentioned areas. The projects to be submitted should aid individuals or businesses in the residential, commercial or institutional sectors. In the area of clean cooking, Schools are to focus on either improved stoves or fuels, while for food processing, schools should focus on how renewable energy could be utilized in the food processing chain, for e.g. in the preservation of food etc. The third edition of the Energy Commission Senior High School's Renewable Energy Challenge would be open to all schools nationwide. 16. Regional competitions would be organized in all the regional capitals to select the best project for each region. Each region is expected to present a maximum of 10 schools for the regional challenge, with the winning school proceeding to the next stage, zonals, of the competition. Two zonal competitions would then be held for the southern and northern zones with each zone comprising eight schools. The best three projects, or schools, would be selected from each zonal competition to exhibit and present at the grand final of the challenge to be held at the Accra International Conference Center during the annual Ghana Renewable Energy Fair in October, 2022. A couple of schools participated, but an Ansan school came out as top. And it was very interesting. Plant microbial fuel cell technology. That's what they use to generate energy. Very innovative. So all of us have understood about the damage to the environment and to nature that uh, the traditional forms of power generation have generated across the world. It's true that in our part of the world, the damage has been relatively little. But nevertheless, we have to be in the forefront of the science. So to have a challenge that focuses on innovation in this area, I think that the Energy Commission ought to be congratulated for devising such a challenge and such a test. It's, 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 it, it means that um, we are being proactive and trying to stay ahead of the curve in finding solutions to now very important national goals and objectives. I'm very, very proud, uh, of, and especially because you responded to one of the most important initiatives of my government, which is this free senior high school educational policy. Uh, it has been the subject of some very vicious attacks, largely for, on an uninformed basis. But when you do what you're doing, each day it becomes a vindication of the policy and of the validity of this policy going forward for our country. Our government will do its best to support this competition so that it becomes a permanent feature on the educational calendar. And the, the next time, that is the, it will be when? This year sometime? This, this, this coming year? This coming. That will be the third edition. When will it be? Around of October. I would like you, uh, Lisa, for you to be in touch with the secretary or with the deputy chief of staff so you fix it on a day where which my calendar can accommodate. So I will be myself there on the occasion. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think it would, it would, it's important that uh, we be seen to be very supportive 
of, of the, the quiz itself and of course and of the direction that it is pointing for us in the country. So well done. And uh, the, but the people who, when they will see me, you unfortunately did not, because I intend to be there next year. Thank you very much. Yes, so far we've seen the route. And then we are very clear right from here where we are going to the very end of it. Once again, let's give ourselves a round of applause, please. And especially our students, because I want to see that the excitement by this time should start hiking up because you are also getting ready so you can take on those special awards. So clap for yourselves for being here with us. Thank you very much for your patience and time. At this juncture, it is now time for us to listen to our special guest of honor. And it is no other person but then the second lady of the Republic of Ghana, Her Excellency, Mrs. Samira Baumia. Shall we please, with a round of applause. I think we can do better whilst she comes in. Thank you. Good morning. Honorable Deputy Minister for Energy. Andrea Japomesa. Chairman and Board of Energy Commission. Executive Secretary, Energy Commission. Deputy Director General, Ghana Education Service. Head teachers, teachers, dear students, Distinguished media, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to join you all here today. Last year, I promised engineer that I was so excited about the event and I was committed to supporting it. So I am here as part of my commitment to the course because I very much believe in it. It's my pleasure to deliver the keynote address at the launch of the third edition of the Energy Commission Senior High School Renewable Challenge. Indeed, from its inception in 2019, where the challenge was held as a pilot program for schools only in Greater Accra Region, we have seen a rapid increase as uh, Deputy GES Director said, from 29 schools to 90 schools in 2021 for the second edition. This significant increase shows the interest and commitment that our secondary schools have shown in this challenge. I'd want to commend the Energy Commission and Ghana Education Service for your collaborative efforts in mainstreaming energy technologies and solutions. What do we make of it? It is my hope that your efforts will lead our country to producing not only brilliant students, but also future scientists that would help develop our nation and our economy. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this year's challenge, clean cooking and food processing using renewable energy technologies, has been carefully chosen to reflect the current situation in the country, Ghana, like many other sub-Saharan African countries, relies heavily on solid biomass fuels for domestic and commercial cooking and heating. Solid biomass constitutes the bulk of domestic fuel sources for over 70% of Ghanaian households. Specifically, 35.1% rely on firewood, while 34.6% rely on charcoal. LPG gas, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, is also used by 25.8% of Ghanaian households. Rural dwellers in Ghana still rely mainly on firewood for their domestic and productive cooking activities. The effects and impacts of the use of these solid biomass fuels, together with inefficient cook stoves, cannot be overemphasized. Unfortunately, this simple act of cooking 
using unclean cooking solutions and fuels leads to household air pollution and is responsible for over 20,000 premature annual deaths in Ghana from non-communicable diseases such as stroke, hearts, really all of us. Distinguished guests, this year's challenge will provide an opportunity for our young students to brainstorm and come up with innovative products to help address the needs of the clean cookies, improve the market value of the food chain, and achieve food security for our country. I am optimistic that this year's challenge will also provide our young and talented students the opportunity to develop food processing technologies and equipment that will be useful for the industry, especially in the areas of storage and preservation. As a global champion for the United Nations Foundation Clean Cooking Alliance, I'm raising awareness on the relevance of access to clean energy, particularly clean cooking solutions and renewable energy technologies and solutions and its impacts on sustainable development and the well-being of women and children as its cardinal point of this effort. I'm happy to be part of this year's challenge and look forward to participating, hopefully, in some of the regional competitions. So do invite me, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is important that we recognize the need to address the challenges of energy access. Clean Cooking Solutions develop, deliver on several of the United Nations development goals. By improving access to clean cooking solutions, we're improving on the health of women and children, saving lives, improving livelihoods, empowering women, protecting the environment, and achieving a better, cleaner, and safer world. I wish to say a big thank you and congratulations to the team from Energy Commission, led by the Executive Secretary, and all those whose contributions have made this possible. I wish to encourage all organizations present here to continue to support the Energy Commission Senior High School's Renewable Energy Challenge and other innovative initiatives such as this. I would want to take this opportunity to inspire all heads of senior high and technical schools to get their teachers and students fully involved in this year's challenge. It is vital that we continue to strengthen our efforts towards facilitating progress in technologies that utilize renewable energies and to spread the knowledge about these efforts. My dear students here and all those who are watching us online, I wish you all the very best as you go through this period of developing your projects. It warms my heart seeing you all here today showing the evidence of weeks, months of dynamism, hard work, and commitment towards developing innovative renewable energy projects. Duly launched. Thank you very much, and God bless us all. I believe we can still give continue with the clap. Let's let's give it up. At this juncture, I will invite Mr. Julius Inkansanyako, the program coordinator, upstage to give us an overview of the challenge. Thank you. Shall we please do that with a round of applause? Thank you very much, Mr. Hukwe. And a very good morning to you all. Uh, Your Excellency, I want to say a big welcome to you once again and for your continual support to this challenge. Um, I believe that after this morning lunch, we, the students gathered here, are yearning to find out what is in store for us. So I'll quickly um, share 
um, the modalities that we have in place. Um, as we've heard today, the theme for this year's challenge is clean cooking and food processing using renewable energy technologies. And we are expecting that um, the schools would present projects in this direction. Um, we will be looking at improved or clean cook stoves and fuels. So not just improved cook stoves, but clean cook stoves and f the fuels as well. Um, food processing and food uh, preservation technologies as well as accessories to these clean cooking technologies. Um, those of us students who are into ICT programming and coding, we would also be expecting you to come up with innovative ideas that could be used in these two areas that are under consideration this year. The competition is now open and we are receiving applications from all schools. Um, we expect that um, all the schools uh, would have a team of five, um, at least four students and a, a teacher supporting them. For the regional competitions, um, we expect each region to submit at least 10 um, projects for um, evaluation. And in the cases where you have more schools um, submitting applications for each region, there will be preliminary um, a competition for, to select the 10 best schools that will present or compete at the regional level. All applications are to be submitted to the regional STMIE coordinators who will then forward it to the Director of Science Education Unit in Accra. And the submissions would come with a complete application form, which the Ghana Education Service has shared with all the schools in Ghana. And then, if possible, if you have a PowerPoint presentation or a project proposal, we don't expect you to write theses at this, at this time just a few points, one or two page proposal to give us an indication of what you want to present. In a case where um, you want to show a video documentary of the process in coming up with your project, you can also do that. But it depends on what you want to do. Just send your application through with a brief of your project proposal. We also expect that each school will present only one entry. There's been instances where people come with two, three, or multiple entries for the judges to select the best out of the three. So please, let's concentrate and come up with only one entry per school. After this um, application um, is closed, we will have 16 regional competitions where the 10 best schools or projects would, would be presented, and we will have a winner for each region. These 16 regional winners will then proceed to two zonal competitions, the northern zone and one for the southern zone. Um, and we will select the best three projects in each zone to um, pitch at the finals, which will be held on 19th October. 2022. And we all heard this morning from a, a special guest that His Excellency the President has promised to be there. And um, before I go, as a project coordinator, I can't leave without saying a big thank you to our sponsors, to GIZ, um, the Tank Advisor is here, Mr. Raymond, Raymond O. Can you give him a big round of applause? He's been doing wonderful for us at the commission. And also our partners from Clean Cooking Alliance, they are online watching this um, event. So to Catherine and Jeline, we want to say thank you for supporting us this year. And we hope that with um, 
the ministers admonition to all the companies in the industry, especially the energy sector agencies. We would want to um, hear from you and then um, we hope that you support us this year. Thank you very much and God bless us all. Thank you very much, Mr. Julius in Kansa. And once again, I want us to use this opportunity to again thank our sponsors, GIZ and then Cooking Alliance for this wonderful support that they've given to us. Shall we please give them a round of applause? We are very grateful. Without them, we wouldn't have been here so far. All too soon, we are coming to the end of this um, wonderful and special edition of the launch. However, before we take our closing prayer and then vote of thanks, um, this information goes to our students. Just when we finish with the prayers, we would meet all of you and in front of the hotel for a very short discussion. Thank you very much. Shall we please, with a round of applause, welcome Mrs. Linda Etter, Head of Public Affairs Energy Commission, to give us a vote of thanks and the closing prayer. Shall we please welcome her with a round of applause, please. Your Excellency, thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all too soon we've come to the end of this program. We want to say a very big thank you on behalf of the board, our executive secretary, the staff, our partners. Thank you for joining us for this very important um, occasion. We are grateful. Shall we please be on our feet for the closing prayer? Let's pray. Omnipotent, omniscient God, we want to thank you for this occasion. Thank you for your faithfulness, for having been with us from the beginning till the end of this program. Father, as we leave, we are not leaving your presence. We are craving, Lord, your protection and your peace for our land, Ghana. We pray that you'll be with each and everyone who is here today as they journey to their various destinations. May you keep us. May you preserve us. May you protect us in all the regions as this program will go. May you send our teams. May you be with our students as they research, as they learn, as they try to bring solutions to the problems that we face as a country. Father, at the end, may we have cause to give you glory. We thank you. We bless you for having heard our prayer. We have asked these and others in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are done. Thank you very much. Shall we please have Her Excellency and all the dignitaries come up stage so that we can...